Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the latest episode of How to Build a Game Studio. I am Trevor Oz, and I am joined today by the head of our studio, Kent Gamble. Hello. How are you? I am doing just fine. I am Great. a. I'm a year older. Is it your birthday today? Uh, it was a couple days ago. Oh well, happy late birthday. I'm a shitty ass friend. <laughs> <laughs> It's okay. I, 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 with you, I don't expect you to remember like anything. Like, Good. like it wouldn't surprise me if you didn't remember your wife's birthday. So, uh, wait. Yeah, I know it. <laughs> I will. So, full disclosure, and I'm gonna get in, in so much trouble for this uh, in in the future. I often mix up my daughter's birthday with my dog's birthdays. So. Um, <laughs> You know, that's going to become an issue when she gets old enough to be like, Dad, what the hell? <laughs> why, why aren't you celebrating my birthday? Because it's Doba's birthday. <laughs> they're, they're a day, like, one, one is on the 19th, one is on the 18th. So that's why. Like, so I'm just going to be like, yeah, it's both your birthdays <laughs> celebration. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's that's going to be a, it's going to be a bad future Kent scenario yeah. that we've, uh. It's hard to remember things when I'm remembering personal and professional things. Yeah, I'll be honest. Like, I don't remember. I don't remember a lot of birthdays except for like maybe a couple people. Like, there's probably like five people's birthdays I remember, and then everybody else is like, it's around here. Like you, I know it's in February sometime, but I don't know the exact day. Do you remember your mom's birthday? I think that's the most important. Yeah, that one I remember. That's there cheap you go. for it. So. And you're uh, a good I got, man. I got that one. That's that's one of the ones I remember. So wait, June twenty fourth? Mm -hmm. No way. That's my dad's birthday. Really? I did not know that they had the same birthday. Huh? That's funny. Well, you learn something new every day. Look at that. Yeah, it's interesting. Now we can remind each other. We're like, dude, did you wish your mom a happy birthday? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um. But yeah, I, I don't remember a lot of stuff either. So, um, Facebook, Facebook used to remind me, but now it's not on the forefront anymore. Mm. Like it used to be like right there, out like on Front Street, and now it's like kind of hidden a little bit. So I never remember now. Um, my, my phone does does the bulk of that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's the that's the good part about phones nowadays is uh, you'll get a lot of those remind. Like I, I mean, even like even if I'm canceling something, like I just put it in my phone now. Or else I won't remember. There's also the downside because somehow my ex-girlfriend's birthday has been linked to my Microsoft account. But like not it's from some old version, like maybe a Windows mm. 7 or something. So I can't just delete it and I have no idea how to get rid of it. So every year on my ex-girlfriend's <laughs> birthday, my phone was like, hey, surprise, it's so-and-so's birthday. And I'm just very thankful that my wife is not the jealous type because I feel like some guys would get in some serious trouble for that and people wouldn't believe, oh, I just can't remove it from my phone. I literally have no idea how to get it unassociated with my account. There's, I would assume there's a way, but it's probably like way too complicated to look into for one notification you get a year. Yeah, like I've been able to remove it like one at a time, but it's mm. still there like Unless I go like a hundred years in the future, removing them one by one, I just don't know how to get rid of it. Yeah, that's uh, that seems like a lot of work just to just to get rid of one notification. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, anyway. Uh, oh yeah, I guess the podcast is not about remembering people's birthdays. Yeah. So uh, yeah, try to remember uh, birthdays if you can, everybody. We're all human. Um, it's about uh, remembering to answer these questions. Yes. That the uh, that the lovely Kickstarter backers over on our Discord uh, have sent to us. Yeah, we got some pretty uh, good questions. Yeah, we got a we got a good amount of questions here. We'll be uh, answering them in this this episode of the podcast. Um, if you're not a backer, uh, you can also send us questions uh, for the future at uh, social media at winterborngames.com, and we'll uh, we'll try to answer them on the podcast uh, when we can. Um, but, and we'll actually be opening up the discord to, uh, non Kickstarter backers at some point. Um, we're just kind of letting our backers get, uh, acclimated, so to speak. 
um, joined up and everything before we actually start throwing everybody into uh, our Discord uh, server. So more more as a way to test it. And it's our first time ever doing a Discord server, so it's almost our way of figuring out what what people want out of it, that sort of thing, um, before we uh, have this massive thing that that keeps growing. So awful sure of yourself, aren't you, Trevor? Think we're popular? <laughs> I mean, I hope we are. Yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I mean that's the that's the goal uh, for us. We've been uh, popular enough to get our Kickstarter funded and popular enough that people showed up for the Discord, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, so I mean we have we have a, we have a good amount. We we got a good amount of people in the Discord, um, so hopefully hopefully we can uh, we can increase that number and and hopefully that that means people are, uh, will like our game and and are actually paying attention to it and that sort of thing so what i'd love to see is uh you know well down the line but eventually when the game comes out i would love to see people discussing kind of like basically the different things that happen based on mm-hmm. some choices and who died or who didn't die because one of my like favorite gaming memories is from playing dear first dragon age game and my friend Jane and I were playing it at the exact same time, but we had, you know, pretty pretty different characters, different choices, and but we were playing at kind of the same rate. So what we would do is basically every day when we sat down and had lunch, we would kind of go over our notes and be like, oh, well, this happened. I'm like, oh, that didn't happen for me. It was because I did this, this, and this. And I always thought that was like, that's something you don't see quite as much like anymore now that you know you just go online and look up what happens in every kind of branching scenario but um theoretically it'll take a little bit of time before people scour every secret from the game because there are some that are going to be pretty well hidden in there so that'll be uh it'll be interesting to see how it plays out at least in my ideal fantasy world i'm sure as soon as we release someone's just gonna (laughs) hack it and look at our scripts and be like oh yeah this is what happens (laughs) <laughs> right, and we'll be like, damn it. But, you know, in my mind, it's going to be cool, and there'll be some hidden yeah, things. Yeah, in, in our heads, there will be some, like, secret things that, that no one will see for years. And then someone will figure it out and be like, oh, my God, I can't believe this was a thing. That's, that's my, my hope. That's what like I'm our, uh, exactly to say. Like our budding partnership with Sunny D. <laughs> One day, it's going to happen. I'm gonna hey, be they, sure they've it. replied to us on Twitter. That's did the first they step. actually reply? They did, yeah. <laughs> nice, I didn't see that. <laughs> they did, so... Uh, uh, to me, that seems like the thumbs up. Hell yeah. All right, that's that's a clearly official go-ahead for our partnership. Yeah, so one step one step closer uh, to having that Sunny D partnership. Uh, look for Externus characters on every... Uh, drink bottle. <laughs> I, I absolutely want to pursue this in like the most <laughs> bizarre marketing campaign ever. It would be like the weirdest marriage ever. Yeah, in just, a way, it's like. I mean, I love like, me some Sunny D, but I don't know. It has nothing to do with our game. The game has nothing to do with it. But it would be all. totally sweet to just have that happen. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and we're cheap. I mean, we'll yeah. put Sunny D in that game for like twenty-five bucks. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Yeah, Sunny D. Uh, reach out. That's all we're saying. Yeah. Uh, anyway, we have some questions uh, from our audience. Uh, we'll start with the uh, the first question here. I'm just going to go down the list. Uh, yeah, that's so that'll probably be the easiest way for us uh, without confusing ourselves. Um, so the first one's from Kason. Um, how many classes and races are going to be in the game? That is both a simple and a difficult question. Um, yeah, I was thinking that as soon as I read it. I was like, <laughs> oh, uh, well. So it, it depends I, on whether you're talking like player characters or are you talking like just totally in general? Because um, if, if you're talking like totally in general, just how many classes and races, the, the answer is just a ton because, you know, we have random kind of monsters that show up that are all you know their own races we have a lot of um very brief npc characters that a lot of people are kind of their own classes um even if they're they're similar types of classes but a lot of times we'll have kind of special like a lot of the special characters have their own class um just to kind of highlight the uniqueness of them um 
but I, I yes, did take a look. It's more, of a, it's more of a character thing than a class thing. So exactly, yeah. Out. Like, because a lot of strategy RPGs are like very class centric, whereas mm -hmm. ours is more focused on the character. So it's not like you're going to have a couple of archers. I mean, you can because we have our mercenaries that you can bring on, and they're kind of more based on their class. But like mm -hmm. the character, the main playable characters themselves, I think. If I'm not mistaken, almost every single one, if not every single one, actually has a unique class. Mm -hmm. um, but I did, so I, I, I took a look. Um, and so if we're talking just player characters, um, as of right now, we have uh, six races represented um, in our planned 20 characters. So there are six different races. And there's actually 20 different classes because each of, of those has their own class. Um, now, those numbers, uh, the reason I say as of right now, those numbers are not 100% finalized because we actually have a couple of backers who did our top uh, tier, which was the ability to actually work alongside us and design a playable character. Um, mm -hmm. And so we might see new races and or new classes from that. Um, so we actually do not have a set number right now, but, um, so I guess what we can say is probably, probably six, six or more races for our major player characters and 20 or more classes for our major player characters. Um, and then one other thing worth mentioning is I took a look at, um, through the original game data. Um, and we actually have 20 kind of classes defined in that. Mm -hmm. So um, even though a lot of people might have s slightly tweaked um, classes based off that, uh, you can expect kind of, let's say like 20 archetypes of classes. So that, that's probably a good number to look at. Um, so, you know, we have like, you know, kind of a knight archetype, which is, you know, your, your heavy armored slower D defense heavy fighter we have our uh like our swordsman archetype um who is kind of the dps um you have you know your different types of mages but they're all kind of like can fall under that magic user umbrella mm -hmm. uh, but breaking it up by there we're looking at about 20 so that's kind of a good a good number to look at without being able to specifically give you the exact without nailing down the exact yeah number yeah uh, but yeah there obviously we just have a lot of a lot of different characters and options in the game so um it's it's gonna i think it's gonna prove to be a, a pretty wide variety uh when you're actually thinking tactically about who i'm gonna bring to this mission and that sort of thing so yeah that's the the hope is that they're viewed more like they're seen with their strengths and weaknesses as their character more so than their class and then mm -hmm. When you need to bring on a mercenary, either because you like a specific play style or you just want to branch out or whatever, or because um, some of your characters have died and you actually need to kind of replenish your ranks, um, that th at that point, you know, you'll probably be hiring based off their class more so than their um, their personality. But um, we're I'm hoping that we have it properly balanced in a way that you will be able to do a pretty much a mix of whatever uh, your favorite characters are that you want to play with um, without really sacrificing kind of tactical advantages. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's definitely the goal overall. I mean, you that's will fun. have, if you try to do a full team of only, you know, healers or DPS, which <laughs> I don't even know if we actually have that, but you'll run into some trouble, but... Uh, it should it should be close. We'll see. All right, so uh, we hope that answers that question for you there, Casey. Um, next, we have uh, Stumpy Dog Best Dog. Uh, <laughs> like the name. Yeah, <laughs> great name, great uh, dog avatar as well. Um, uh, they ask, uh, is permadeath a thing for everyone, mercenaries only, or did I misinterpret that line completely? So, may, I, I think. With this one, uh, they're just not sure if, if permadeath is a thing for uh, all characters, um, which uh, Kent? Uh, 
yes with a caveat yeah so, i was gonna say um, yes and no so permadeath is a thing for virtually all characters um and that includes both the major player characters as well as the mercenaries the caveat is that there's an ability that some characters will have innately and you actually would will be able to uh train into other characters which uh we're currently calling it iron will that may or may not you know end up in the final game but the ability will which uh actually prevents uh that character from perma dying and so the the, the way it basically works is it was slightly different in the demo and we did this for the sake of simplicity where basically once your hit points drop to zero uh that character just died but actually both Cinna and um Osmond have the um, the Iron Will ability, and so if you played through and had them die, you'll notice they actually came back with one hit point the following um, battle. But the way it works in the final game is that once your hit points drop below zero, rather than immediately dying and dropping out of the battle, um, you go into a downed state, and then you actually have a couple of turns based on a couple of different factors. Um, before you basically bleed out. And if a character bleeds out, that's when the permadeath kicks in. But if either A, the battle is finished before that happens, or B, there are items and skills you can use to stabilize characters, rather than dying and being gone, um, then they will basically be removed from the battle, but they have the ability to come back um, in the following battles. And so the caveat there is any character which has this Iron Will ability, when they drop in, rather than actually bleeding out when their kind of bleed out timer goes, they're removed from the battle, but they are not permanently killed. Um, so yeah, hopefully that answers the question. Um, and the people who have the Iron Will ability are actually, it's a little bit of a mixture between um, some of them have it because they're main characters and we just unfortunately are not able to completely change like the kind of core story um because we just don't have the manpower to do so um but there are also characters who have the ability just because it you know it, it reflects their kind of personality like you know if if you can expect that person to have such an iron willpower with the fact that they're so stubborn they're not going to die even when you expect them to die they will actually have it in in the game um there are there are still ways to get those party members out of your party or most party members out of your party based on choices um but yeah that it, it's <laughs> like a lot of things there's the caveat but generally speaking uh permadeath will and can be applied to almost everyone that will be in your party well, there you go. Permadeath is a thing for mostly everybody. Um, so if you don't want your characters dying, uh, you'll want to play a little more defensively and uh, make sure you are stocked up on healing items. Yeah, and I, I want to say, I think the bleed-out mechanic was... Didn't they do that in XCOM? Uh, yes, I believe they had... It's been a while I, since I've played XCOM. They definitely yeah. had something. I don't know if it's exactly I don't think the it, Yeah, I don't think it was is. all the time. Um, and obviously, I don't know if it was tied... I don't think it was tied to a specific ability. But no, uh, it was basically rather... Like, if... I, I believe it was based on, on how much health they dropped. So, like, you yeah. know, if they hit them hard, then they're basically dead. But if you're a little lucky, you can kind of essentially get grazed and you're bleeding out. Whereas... Aside from a few specific abilities, generally speaking, people in the game will drop into um, the downed state. But the kind of uh, kind of bad part of that is there are actually some enemy types um, who will, if you're attacked while you're in a down state, you go to the dead state. And while most enemies will immediately kind of move on to the next threat. There are some enemy uh, AI behaviors where they will actively seek out and try to kill people who are downed. Um, so basically, those guys are total dicks, and you want to make sure you don't <laughs> leave anyone downed around them. All right. Perfect. Um, 
Yeah, and I think uh, I want to say I'm pretty sure Gears Tactics has a similar uh, system in place as well. So I still uh, got to play because my computer, my personal computer, is too weak to play it. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty good. I mean, I haven't played enough of it. I actually want to play more of it, but uh, what I played is pretty good. I'm hoping so. they announce the Xbox version, like <clears throat> update and everything, on, on Thursday. I'm pretty. I'm, well, they did say it would be this year, so I mean, it's got to be uh, soon then. Yeah, so maybe it's gonna be. Maybe they'll have it out for launch with the Series X, perhaps, um, which would make sense. I could I could do that. I'd be happy with yeah. that. Um, n- so next uh, question we have on the list is from Vio. Uh, what will be added to make sure there is replay value to the game? Interesting question. Um, so I, I was gonna say I don't know if we need to add anything. Uh, I mean, based on what we have, I think the replay value will be in uh, the characters. Uh, what characters stay alive? What characters uh, happen to die in your game? Whether you want to keep this character alive or maybe let other characters die to see how that changes the game. I think that'll add a ton of replay value to the game. Yeah, I, I do think that's like. And I don't want to say there's not a lot of replay value just because, like, I think there is. But, you know, a lot of times, like, our focus on the game is not specifically, like, to replay through it so many times. It's really to have that experience of the story and the characters. But like you said, like, I'm hoping that kind of what happens is different enough based on, like you said, characters, based on some choices that um, it you know, you, you enjoy it enough to go through and, and replay it a couple of times. Um, and, you know, I, I think we've mentioned that, like, the core story, the very core of the story is pretty much set. Um, be, just because, you know, aside from some tweaks and stuff on the endings, like, we can't really change it that much. But um, a lot of things will change based off your, uh, your choices, based off the characters that live and die. And so you know that that's really where the replay comes in is kind of like what path your journey takes based off your choices and how you play um and then the differences between that and there is actually we are not ready to announce it yet but there is one special feature um oh yeah we're working on uh i don't know exactly when we'll announce it but it's definitely going to be a little ways down the line but I think that'll that's going to add, I don't know if it'll necessarily be replayability, but it's going to add a lot of kind of fun diversionary content. Um, yeah, for which sure. Should add, well, let's say it should add play time, not necessarily replayability. Um, and mm-hmm. we can't really get in anything more specific than that cryptic message uh, without <laughs> giving the feature away. Um, which we will talk about at some point in the future. Yeah, probably that that one will, will probably save till close to the launch. So it'll be a bit before we actually talk about that one. Um, all right. Next up, we have Keystone Defiant, who is our friend Chris with the hat. Hi, yeah, Chris uh, with the hat. Uh, so Chris asks, uh, which mechanic in the game do you feel is the hardest to balance? Hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna cheap out a little bit. Rather than saying any one specific mechanic, um, I think the hardest thing to balance is actually the combination of so many mechanics. Um, and so, because we we have a lot of of kind of small, not necessarily hidden, but not really in your face mechanics that happen during battle. Um, So, for example, one that I don't think a lot of people were aware of, and that's just because we didn't, like, throw it in your face, is um, your chance to hit actually goes up or down based on your height relative to the person you're attacking. So if you have the high ground, you have a higher chance to hit. Um, And we actually have a lot of little mechanics like that that kind of change up the battlefield a lot because uh, because we want the, the battlefield itself to be so important. Um, so we have things like that. We have things like, um, the, the terrain you're standing on, uh, will actually affect things like that. Um, you are more susceptible to certain types of attack based on terrain, based on weather conditions. So there's a lot of these kind of small, subtle 
effects that happen. Um, and I think it's really, like, I, I'm already aware of it and we haven't really even gotten into the full balancing phase, um, which is, you know, going to be closer to beta. But I'm already aware that it's just, it's difficult to make sure that everything is balanced and there's nothing that kind of comes out as like a super OP way to play. So, you know, I don't want, hopefully we will not get into a situation where, you know, you find out that if you equip a certain class with a certain set of abilities that they're just like, they can awesome. roll any enemy. Like, <laughs> so that's definitely the hardest part. Just how many kind of levers we have to play with is, is pretty difficult to balance. And the fact that we are not we are not planning on having a difficulty mode per se. Um, we're kind of planning on going the old school route where we're hoping we can balance it to be challenging, but not overly difficult except some of the side content is going to be really really challenging so that's kind of where you if you want to flex your your strategic and tactical muscles you'll seek that stuff out um we may have some accessibility options to basically just make kind of combat easier i think we probably will um but you know a lot of times i think the balance on things like that is it's just oh it's easy mode all enemies have 20 percent less health like oh it's hard mode all enemies have 100 percent more health or you know we're not really planning on doing it that way so that adds a little bit of difficulty in just making sure that the kind of overall experience is is well balanced so yeah uh, better you have to think about that than me <laughs> hey man, you. Uh, I need everyone's opinions during the. Uh, the QA yeah, I mean, obvi obviously I'll be QAing and testing, but but uh, like, it's a lot to think about all at once. It's going to uh -huh. be difficult because I'm sure it'll come out with the demo where like the first iteration of the demo, <laughs> everyone died all the time. Yeah. Um, and because that's just me, like I like my stuff stupid, challenging. Um, and obviously that's not that's not what we're going for. I mean, I don't even think I could beat it most of the time. Um, but I think I think what we achieved in the demo, where generally it was not that difficult to to play through and beat the demo, but what was difficult was actually keeping Trevor to Oz alive through the demo. <laughs> yeah, and, that, that was the hard part. Yeah, like I, you know, I could do it. I don't know, 60, 70 percent of the time, but still, often I w I would have to focus, and I think that's kind of that's kind of the sweet spot we're looking at where you can beat the game. Hopefully you don't have to grind a whole lot to beat the game. I don't even think we're, we're not really planning on having a lot of like grinding in it. Um, but it's not going to be easy to kind of do everything, complete everything. Like there will be situations where if you're smart, you should run from them. Unlike most games where you're just kind of the Uber badass. Um, there are there are bad situations where um, you will not be able to overcome them easily. So I think that's what we're going for, and hopefully we can continue to keep that kind of balance between the the core and the kind of step above. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a that's a good answer. And uh, uh, yeah, I know with the demo, I think I kept trevor dawes alive once oh yeah um, <laughs> of playing through it like several times as we were trying to test it to, to put it out so um so going into that um the next question from chris is uh what feature or mechanic are you most concerned slash scared about coding due to the complexity of it hmm, that's a good question um for me, honestly, I think it's going to be our quest system. Um, and that it's going to be scared more than concerned um, because I just I really want it to be a very robust kind of generic system that can handle adding quest very easily. Um, and the more complex a quest is, the more difficult it is to make a system like that. Um, so the kind of the, what we had in the demo and kind of what we have right now in the game is, is a really, really simple version of it. It's kind of like, you know, go here, do that, you're done. Um, but I want to make it, the, the, the reason I want to make it kind of 
really, really good quest system is the idea that maybe we can add some free patches with new quests and things like that, which I guess that also kind of answers a little bit of replayability type things. Um, or, you know, if people are having a really hard time or, if you know, anything's broken or whatever, like the idea is I would like that system to be really, really robust, really, really easy to work with so we can kind of easily patch or fix things. Um, and so I'm not, I'm, I'm not concerned with having a quest system in and working. I am concerned with getting the quest system to the level that I want it at um, so that it can basically achieve all of the features I want it to be able to achieve. Um, and then I guess the other, this one's, if you would have asked me this at the beginning, um, it's just the concept of because I haven't really done a lot of graphics programming um, since college. And because we're kind of doing our own engine, um, just the simple fact of having the kind of 2D characters in the 3D world mm -hmm. and having them kind of properly interact with each other um, was a little bit of a challenge. Uh, and, you know, we're not, we're, we're, we got it mostly working, but there's still a few kind of like lighting things that I want to improve prior to launch. Um, and that was a pretty complex thing, just getting facing working, you know, and like lighting interacting with it because when you have a 2D character, really what's in that world is a, a quad, like a, a square with an image on it. Um, and so when light hits that, unless you're doing kind of some special coding, which we ended up doing, you're just lighting a square and that's not really what we were looking for because we want we want you to think these characters are in the world um and so yeah there was that was that was complex that was a lot of a lot of effort getting that kind of working to the point when we did um but it was really important i think to get it just because it was it was almost like that that's the real that's really the nostalgic feel when i see that kind of specific setup um that takes me back to kind of tactics um and it was it was important for me and I I think Moody as well, um, kind of for the aesthetic we were going for to be able to achieve that. So it was it was difficult, but I think it was time well spent because I do like kind of the look we have um, both in the demo and now with some additional stuff. I don't think we've fully shown yet, but uh, we fixed up a few additional things and then polished up the lighting a little more. And I think what we have now is really uh, visually pleasing. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. All right, so uh, moving on, uh, we go back to our friend Kason, um, who asked the question: uh, Will the game is the game going to have a morality system and/or faction system? Uh, there are not really any plans for those. No, um, uh, there. I mean, there is the the concept of your choices matter, um, which, I mean, I guess is kind of a morality system. Um, but no, we're not going to have, like, a, we don't really have, like, a renegade versus, you know, paragon, paragon system. Or, or, or light versus side versus people. dark side. Yeah. 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 Um, and actually, specifically, we, we are hoping not to have that because we kind of want, we're, we're hoping to be more in this gray area. Like, this is this is less... I, this is, I would say it's more of a human story. Exactly. Um, like you, you want the characters uh, to, you want the characters to feel real and like they're actually making a decision. And I think in in actual real life, people just people make a decision based off of a ton of different factors, not necessarily whether it's a good or a bad decision. Yes, well put. That's uh, that's kind of what we're going for. We don't really. Uh, you know, the, the, the concept and the story that we play with a lot is fate versus free will um, and kind of like an actual theme that we have that goes through the story is uh, some of the main characters trying to figure out, like, are they doing the right thing? And it's it's something we wanted to explore. Like you said, the human story of like, you know, there's this there's this kind of romantic idea of a hero just being fully, you know, infallible and they're always doing the right thing but like what if what if they're not what what the, there's a lot when you're kind of trying to to do these major things it's like your choices affect you they affect close to people close to you they affect a lot of people that aren't you 
you don't even you're not even aware of kind of the the ripples that you're causing and so the idea is less there's not really as many kind of clear light versus dark versus good versus bad type decisions it's more about like you know you're thrust into this situation what do you do your party members are going to have differing opinions like you know everyone's not going to be on the same page if this is exactly what we should do aside from maybe a few decisions here and there. Yeah. And I think if you, if you even like uh, look into the complexities of uh, looking at some of the best like villains um, out there, a lot of them uh, think what they're doing is right. And for the good, for the greater good um, when even, even if they're doing bad things. Mm-hmm. So to, to be able to play around with that, I think is, is super interesting um, because at that point it's like, are we the heroes or are we the villains? Yeah. Like Witcher does a really good job of that. Or like, there's not a lot in the Witcher games or, you know, the Witcher world where it's like, this is clearly the good guy and this is clearly the bad guy. Like, you know, he, Geralt lives in a perpetual world of gray <laughs> and there's yeah. not always a perfect happy ending. Even if you do, both choices like there's oftentimes some oftentimes somebody doesn't win and a lot of it's going to be that where you know if two kingdoms are fighting who's to say that one's the good guy and one's the bad guy they're both just fighting for ideals or land or you know different situations right yeah so uh humans are complex so we hope to make our game uh also feel like it's complex so um, and as far as factions, I mean, we're going to have, like, there are factions in the game, so to speak, but there's no actual system behind it. Yeah, that's a fair point. There are th- there are many factions in the game, and your choices will impact, you know, certain relations with them, but it's, it's, not, it's not to the point where you can bring up a menu and see kind of your reputation with any given faction. It's more of a... You know, oh, at the beginning of the game, I actually killed, you know, one of the the white stag knights, um, which I don't even think they're in the game. I'm using them as an example because um, they're not a spoiler. Um, But in the original, there was this small group called the white stag knights. um, And as an example that is not going to be present in the game, you, you know, fought and killed one of them later down the line. They're not going to provide you your support for you know, like a given campaign. So those types of faction interactions will be there. Um, but again, there's not going to be a necessarily a system that kind of represents uh, how you're doing with anyone. Okay. Um, the next question from Case Hunt is, uh, how many members can you have in your party, crew, unit, or band? Uh, that's actually still in flux. Um, yeah. And will almost certainly be based on the battle um, that you're currently in. Uh, I think, generally speaking, we're looking probably at six. That's kind of what, uh, it's kind of a standard that's used in a lot of tactical RPG um, games. And uh, really the reason for that is just, if you start bringing in more characters, it just, it takes a really, really long time when you have too many characters and um actually in our original game design we had uh i think it was like four different types of battles and based on that type of battle there was like a skirmish and like a, a war and like a battle i can't remember the exact terms but i think i had up to maybe 20 different characters like in your party in a given battle and mm-hmm. it was awful it was just it was just <laughs> plain bad um so that's a number that we're still playing with. Um, six kind of seems to be the the number that feels good. It's but... yeah, it's kind of the sweet spot, and and you got to think the more characters you add, the more complex it is, and the harder it is to balance. Mm-hmm. So for even from that standpoint, if you the more you add to it, the more the more difficult it, it is for us to balance each and every encounter. And you know that that's something that that we really want to do. So. Um, if it's a hard time for us to balance each and every encounter, it'll just take longer work for us to develop the game. So, yep. So yeah, I think it, 
it's not a set in stone because like i said it is based upon the the given battle sometimes you'll be able to bring a couple more people in sometimes you'll have a much smaller it kind of depends on what's going on at the point of the battle if you're trying to infiltrate a location you're going to have a very small group if you're you know fighting a battle kind of like in a big war scenario or near kind of your your base where your your people are situated you can bring more um if you're fighting in tight quarters you know you can't bring that many people or they're just standing around in the back if you're fighting in a huge open area more people can fit in um but yeah six is kind of the will be the average and it'll go up or down based on what's happening kind of in a given situation yeah i would say based on what's happening probably based on what decision you make um, as far as like what tactical decision, like, you know, are you going to sneak in during the night or, mm. you know, that sort of thing. Like, like we showed a little bit of that in the demo, um, that sort of thing. So exactly. Um, so, uh, going back to Kaysen, um, is the team going to have a ship, uh, or a base? Um, I don't want to reveal too much. Um, but I don't think there's any spoilers saying this. Yes. The team has a base. Um, no, you are probably not going to have much in the way of like kind of base building or base management. Um, it's actually a feature, which I believe we had as one of our upper stretch goals, because it's, uh, it's a feature that I personally really like in my games. Um, but it just kind of ended up getting, you know, scrapped for time um so that we could focus on kind of the core gameplay so it's it's possible it's going to be something that that ends up making it in or comes back as maybe maybe some dlc or maybe some uh like some uh some free add-ons or something like i don't think we're really we're not planning on doing dlc um yeah but a, a lot of that's up in the air like when this game is finished kind of where we go from there um <laughs> There, there's a lot up in the air. Um, we're definitely not just going to abandon the game and the the IP and the, the world. I mean, unless like two people buy it, but as long yeah. as we get a couple people that we can keep going. Um, so yes, there the, in the story, there actually is a base that your party gets and will operate out of and visit a couple of times. Um, but there is unlikely currently to be any kind of base building or base um, improvement mechanic. Uh, though I would absolutely love to get that in there, um, kind of breath of uh, what's that? Breath of fire, breath of fire style, where it's just kind of some simplified mechanics, and you kind of get access to stuff based on what you bring into your base. Mm -hmm. All right, and uh, the final question we have is, uh, again, from Kaysen. Uh Can you change the looks of your characters? Thanks for all the questions, Kaysen. Uh No, yeah. we do not have plans right now for changing the looks of the characters, um, especially for the main characters. Um, and that just goes back to kind of our design decision of instead of going with the more class-based approach that some of tactical RPGs take, we're taking the more kind of character focused approach so that, you know, like the looks are kind of part of, of, of a character and kind of their visual design is uh, everything was really made and designed kind of with purpose. Um, we may end up doing something where like, maybe if you beat the game, you get alternate costumes for them, something along those lines, but that would be more of like a fun kind of second playthrough thing as opposed to like, a customizable thing mm -hmm. um there may be uh options to change the looks of mercenary characters that you bring in because um we you know we will be creating kind of essentially randomized mercenary characters um so if you want them to look a certain kind of way um then they can but it is not going to be anything super extensive. Like you're not going to be able to, you know, select hairstyle and, and color and things like that. Um, it would be more just like, here's one given look, here's a second given look. Um, yeah, essentially and, like this guy looks like a knight, this guy looks like an archer. Exactly. Uh, yeah. And we'll probably have a couple variations of that. Like, mm. you know, the, the, the idea, if we do it, I, I, 
we're not locking in, but if we do it, it would be something along the lines of uh, this mercenary character is a knight and I want him to have the, you know, like the, the Alanon skin versus the, uh, like the Dezen skin. So he would still be a knight, but he would have like different colors and emblems based on uh, um, that. Um, and honestly, that's kind of based upon the number of, of NPCs you're going to encounter in the game. If that makes sense, like, like a, a lot of there'll, there'll be some reuse in that area for the mercenaries. Um, so it'll really it'll really depend on that. Um, but generally speaking, there is not a there is not a customization focus uh, as of right now. All but right, then. there's still I mean, I just wanted to say the last thing is. I know we haven't been super concrete on all of the details. Like some of them are pretty set in stone. Um, a lot of this will actually be based upon feedback from, you know, when we release our alpha and beta builds and we're a little further down the line. And if it turns out like everyone is like, oh, I like the game, but man, I really want customization. Like, okay, that's suddenly something we realize is very important to everyone. And we, we can shift priorities basically. So Plus, I mean, to, to add on to that, it'll also depend on where we're at in the dev dev cycle, too. And, mm -hmm. you know, what what are we hitting our goals on time? Stuff like that. So if it's something that is going to push us back by six months, I mean, odds are we're probably not going to do it. Yeah. You know? But but if it's, you know, if it if it shifts us, you know, like a couple of days, then then we'd probably be more likely to, to do that. So it really just depends on on where we are in the dev cycle and and how we're hitting our goals and and stuff exactly. like that how many more global pandemics show up in the meantime right yeah <laughs> all kinds of crazy stuff like that um but yeah as as of right now we can we can say this it is not in the schedule like it, currently it is not planned to be in our schedule um so, but like trevor said there's there's a lot there's a lot uh going on so that <laughs> schedule is changing frequently um and, but we'll have a much stronger idea once we get kind of like to our alpha state when we have a lot more locked in like right now the kind of state of the game is we have our systems kind of complete but we don't and you know we have our content plan and like you know the the mm -hmm. story plan and what's going to happen all the story beats planned out but it's not 100% locked down right now until we kind of get closer to alpha state. So we may end up changing things. We still may end up cutting sections. We may add some sections if you know we find out that there's missing things that people need to know about. Um, so all of those are kind of going to factor into these kind of like nice to have features. Um, and you know, a lot of it is just we can't afford to go into feature creep, um, but we also want to give people as much as we possibly can so it's mm -hmm. it's all just a delicate art of so, balancing <laughs> yeah yeah i mean we just got to figure out uh what's right for the game you know uh compared to what's right for like you guys that are mm -hmm. that are actually going to be playing and enjoying the game so um we want to make sure that that what we what we are able to put in the game is done well and done right exactly yeah it's at the end of the day our focus is the story. Our focus is our characters really getting fleshed out and kind of becoming, you know, real people. And our focus is on a, an enjoyable, well-polished kind of gameplay loop. Um, so kind of that is where all of our focus lies. And if we move on to more extra features that go on top of that, it will only be kind of like when we're like, yep, all three of those are perfect. We're good to go. Yeah, exactly. So with that, uh, that uh, that ends our uh, questions uh, asked to us uh, from our Discord channel. Thank you uh, to Kason, uh, Vio, uh, Chris, uh, Stumpy Dog, Best Dog. Thank you guys for uh, all <laughs> yeah. the great questions. Um, we appreciate it. Absolutely. And uh, anybody else that's listening to this, uh, we'll absolutely answer more questions. If you have any more questions, uh, maybe we'll just wait and gather them, gather them up and uh, do another uh, podcast is just basically us just uh answering a bunch of questions for you guys uh we would love to do that um 
do some uh, regular Q and A's um, at some point uh, in our Discord channel. We'll probably actually just do some like live chats with us um, at some point. Uh, we'll schedule those out, but we'll probably be uh, closer to uh, once we have a bit more stuff concrete down the line. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, we're looking forward to uh, to to keep interacting with uh, you guys, our audience. Um, and actually uh, answering any questions you have and stuff like that. So uh, we appreciate you, you guys that did ask us questions on on this episode of the podcast. And uh, and thank you guys for listening. Uh, Kent, anything else uh, um, before we get out of here? No, I was just going to say, as far as the questions, um, especially for anyone that kind of has come recently into the podcast, um, we're also totally happy to answer questions regarding um, kind of the studio um, and or just the games just, industry yeah like kind of or, anything video game related yeah i was gonna say or just video games like you can just ask us like what our favorite games are like i mean you can ask us dumb questions like like what's our favorite pizza topping or you know whatever Sausage. it's like well that's that's a good choice actually that's oh, yeah. you, know, you know if i were to pick one that would probably be my top choice so it's the best choice yeah i i would <laughs> <laughs> I would agree with you. Yeah, we're on the same page here. So, um, yeah, so maybe don't ask that question because we've mm, answered it. But it's done. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we're we're up to to answer anything that you guys have to throw at us. So I mean, it could be uh, the most off the wall question to you know to anything really. So yeah. Also, if you guys ever want us to do any kind of like deep dive on any specific thing so i know for example we've had podcast with moody talking about kind of like the art process um and i think we had one very early where um we've talked about with boo about kind of some of the the audio design process and we actually we have more footage with videos that will be going up to our youtube but we have like one video up right now i think with boo kind of Mm-hmm. showing uh showing how he makes uh sound effects for a short sword which i always really like those so if you guys ever want to see anything any kind of deep dive in, along anything like that if you're really interested um just yeah let us know and we're we're happy to kind of do what we can to to answer that to show off a video to kind of go into the character design process kind of any anything that you guys might be interested in um yeah, kind of the whole point of this is, is building our community and getting feedback from you guys because while we're definitely building this game for us, we want to make sure we're building it for you guys um, because a game is not a good game if no one enjoys it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. So, yeah, if you have anything uh, that you'd like to see from us, like that you'd like to see from us in the future, I know uh, on the Discord we've, we've talked about maybe doing some... Uh, tabletop games uh whether it be dungeons dragons or otherwise um at some point uh i I think that would that's definitely something we'll do in the future um that sort of thing so but yeah uh anything that you that you would like to see from us definitely let us know uh throw it into the discord or if you're not on the discord yet um you can join when we open it up or you can just email me at social media at winterborngames.com and i'll take a look at it but anyway, uh, thank you guys for listening. Uh, we appreciate, again, uh, appreciate your questions and everything. Uh, just make sure to uh, go follow everything externusgame.com. You can pre-order it on our pre-order store now. Uh, still at the $20 price tag. Uh, so go do that. Uh, all the cool kids are doing it if you haven't already. Uh, Love those <laughs> and, cool kids. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much.